Let me tell you for a fact that if Jesus said greater, he really meant greater. Hallelujah. So journey with me through scripture as we explore the implication of this word greater. Why would Jesus use the word greater? Was it that he was limited? Is it true that he was limited? The Bible tells us for a fact that there were certain miracles that Jesus could not perform and it does not credit it to the limitation of his ability. It credits it to the unbelief of the people. And yet Jesus seems to be expressing limitation, perhaps for the first time, that there is something you will do that I could not do. Two reasons. Number one, the first reason why Jesus used the word greater to express what the saints would do listen to this while Jesus walked upon the earth he largely did all that he did alone while Jesus walked upon the earth he largely did all that he did alone but today all believers can carry out this mandate and have access to the spirit bringing greater efficiency so when Jesus says greater works he also meant greater efficiency because while I walked upon the earth I was the only one who had the spirit without measure to the degree that empowered me to do what I was doing now every believer in Christ can have access to this spirit are we together now when Jesus walked upon the earth, if he was in Nazareth, he could not be in Caesarea Philippi at the same time. Jesus himself revealed that he was limited and oftentimes he would say, let us go over to the other side. As God, he had the ability to be omnipresent, the word being everywhere. But while he was trapped in a human material body, he could not be everywhere. So when he says greater works, it is greater works because of greater efficiency. Number one, as a result of the widespread distribution of the Spirit of God, that it will no longer be trapped in a single individual, but that all believers, according to the prophecy of Joel, are we together? That I shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams and so on and so forth. Your young men will see visions. The first reason why that statement is true and why he used the word greater is that while he walked upon the earth, he largely did all he did alone. And the Bible tells us in Acts chapter 12 and verse 24, Acts chapter 12 and verse 24, except, sorry, John, John 12, 24, please. My apologies, John 12, 24. Except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies, the Bible says it abided alone. But if it die, it can bring forth much fruit. That means if you hold a grain or two of corn, you can eat it, it can't feed a family, it cannot even eat you. you I, mean, I mean, you cannot even eat it, you swallow it like a pill. And that's the end of it. But when you plant that same corn, you are going to have at least two years of corn as a result of that. And you can now, if you plant that one again, very soon you're going to have corn enough to feed the nation. And Jesus is saying, I am alone. If I die, I will bring a multiplier effect because my death will give the saints access to the life of God and access to the Holy Spirit. Greater works because you will not be alone. It will be a widespread manifestation of bodies that have been available to be used by God, even by the Spirit. You have that down? Now, the second reason is what is most important as to why Jesus used the concept of greater. And I want you to listen very carefully and let this enlighten your mind indeed. The first time the Lord told me, I was, I, was, I was amazed that it had been in the Bible and yet I did not have the eyes to see. Now, here's what I wrote. In spite of the many miracles Jesus performed while on earth, there was one miracle which was the greatest need of man he could not perform. There was one miracle that Jesus could not perform, not before the cross, not after the cross, not until after the cross. 
out of the many miracles that he did he calmed the sea he casted out devils but there was one miracle and that miracle represented the greatest need of man he did not have the ability and the allowance to perform that miracle because that miracle will demand death the one miracle Jesus could not perform all the saints can perform it today greater works Jesus himself watch this he could forgive sins he told many people your sins are forgiven but Jesus could not give anyone eternal life before his death that one miracle Jesus himself there was no message to preach that men would believe there was no blood of the remission of sins yes there was no death on the cross yet there was no resurrection yet so that miracle that represented the answer to the true state of man could not be performed by Jesus before the cross so when he said greater works he meant that the believer will have an advantage and be able to communicate the gospel in its entirety are we together now every problem Jesus solved while he was on earth was a symptom of man's real problem the real problem of man was that he was alienated from the life of God he needed more than healing he needed more than bread are we together now everybody Jesus healed still died everybody Jesus fed still went hungry but that one miracle of reconciliation it demanded that he would have to die, pay the price with his blood. Let me show you three scriptures. Colossians chapter 1, 12 to 14. Then we'll jump to 19 and 20. Watch this. Giving thanks unto the Father, which had made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. 13. It says, who had delivered us, watch this now, from the power of darkness and had translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Verse 14, it says, in whom we have redemption. How? Not by a pronouncement. Every other miracle Jesus performed, he performed it with his word. But redemption happened beyond his word. His blood and his life had to be, had to be shed for man to be saved redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sin 19 for it pleased the father that in him should all fullness dwell verse 20 now it says and having made peace how through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself by him I say Paul is speaking whether they be things in earth all things in heaven reconciliation was not a miracle that happened just by a divine pronouncement because the Bible says the wages of sin is death it says without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sin so when Jesus says greater works than this shall you do he meant that you will be empowered to in partnership with the Holy Spirit attend to the greatest need of man he was going to make the way available, but will become advocates of that truth, bearing witness to the truth. Next scripture, Ephesians 1, 7. Ephesians 1, 7. Paul again is speaking and he says, in whom we have redemption. Are you seeing it clearly from scripture that true redemption is only through the blood of Jesus, the forgiveness of sin, according to the riches, the abundance of his grace so Jesus worked many great miracles but there was one that could not be performed in his earth work the price for that miracle that happened to be the greatest miracle representing the greatest need of man could not be performed while Jesus was alive he had to die go to Hades shed his blood he had to resurrect by the glory of the Father for that miracle to happen to men and today we thank God that that miracle is possible that men can be reconciled to Jesus that we who were alienated from the commonwealth of Israel the Bible says we have been brought nigh through the blood of the eternal covenant that we can come boldly to the throne of grace today and obtain mercy find grace to help even in time of need are we together so when Jesus says greater it is important for us to know 
that he calls it greater because number one the spirit of god has made the presence of jesus unlimited it is amazing that while i am here preaching there is some preacher somewhere declaring the counsel of god there is some evangelist somewhere the same holy spirit sponsoring this spiritual advocacy there is someone in his room watching a message right now there is another person doing a one-on-one -on -one evangelism there is another person reaching people in the village there is another person speaking in french another in spanish another in english Hausa, another in yoruba another in Igbo. and all of these men jesus could not do all of that alone but now greater works can happen because the holy spirit has made this possible hallelujah imagine if you were the only one who had the ability to preach the gospel just one out of eight billion people number one you will most likely die either of demonic attack or exhaustion are we together when you read about the world's revival one of the tragedies of men respectfully speaking like Ivan Roberts who was the pioneer of the world's revival the um, history now tells us that that man literally he died of exhaustion and fatigue because there was such a move of God the fire of God was spreading you know across his region and then he had to be at the helm of affairs managing the move of God at that point and for sheer exhaustion I think out of all God's generals recorded as we know he was the one who died youngest and it was largely, it was not just of a demonic attack, we presume. He was just exhausted as a human being. Can I tell you, every time you stop men from accessing the life and the power of God and accessing the relevant graces that help them, number one, you are doing yourself a disservice because you will literally die of fatigue and exhaustion. There is a reason why God gave the ability for grace to be distributed from one person to the other so that you are limited in terms of your assignment and then your body can be able to take it can take your spirit while you serve there are many people today who are literally dying of fatigue I would say the reason is because they are afraid of empowering and raising others Jesus was not he said greater works there was one Jesus, but there are many witnesses. One Jesus, the faithful witness, but today there are many witnesses. I don't know how many of them are in this place, but I presume everyone under the sound of my voice. Witnesses, mandated and anointed to bear witness to the light. And there are many thousands and ten thousands of others following online. Witnesses, because Jesus said, greater works. Jesus met all kinds of people. He could rehabilitate their minds and prepare them to expect to receive salvation when all was said and done. But there was nobody, no mention of anybody receiving eternal life before Jesus died. He forgave sins. Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. But that was impossible because sin is first a nature before an outworking. You can do your best using the principles of the Lord to stop the outworking. But that nature, the psalmist said, in sin, in iniquity did my mother conceive me. Are we together? Greater works. Greater works. Hallelujah. There is what we can do that Jesus could not do before his death. Not as a result of limitations, but he had to subscribe to the protocol that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Today, we can stand and preach on the strength of what he has done and call many people to the cross and with joy and in a moment, that translation can happen from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of God's dear son. I think he was... Billy Graham of blessed memory. I listened to one of his profound crusades. This was a crusade that he held probably in the 80s. And he was diagnosing the true states, the cancer that man really needed to be healed of. And he made references to all kinds of sicknesses that plague men and the efforts being made by the then world 
you know, of medical science to solve and to cure many problems. And he said the greatest of them, the cancer that really needed healing in the life of man was that cancer of separation from Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, what is the ultimate goal of greater works? To what end is this agenda? What is this about? Why is Jesus insistent on the saints stepping into this dimension of greater works? I wrote here and I want you to listen and write, please. The ultimate goal for greater works, the ultimate goal for greater works is that the knowledge of the glory of God fills the entire earth, drawing many to Jesus. You see why I was profoundly blessed by the worship ministration of our precious people here that the entire goal for greater works is that the knowledge of the glory of God that it fills the entire earth every nation every city every nook and cranny drawing many to Jesus Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 14 Habakkuk 2 and verse 14 Read with me, please. Ready? One, two, read. For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Let's read it one more time. One, two, go. For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. You know how much water is in the earth? The earth is about 70% water as we know and then about 30% land. And that I believe that may even be an old statistic because of things like global warming and the rest. Are we together now? Yes. That the ice is melting and eating into land and so there is more land space being chopped up by water right now. And the Bible says in that similitude, the knowledge, he never said the glory of the Lord, the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. And I've taught you that the glory of God consists of everything that makes God God. His love, his mercy, his power. He says that the knowledge of it, the knowledge of his love, the knowledge of his mercy, the knowledge of his power, the knowledge of his grace, that it should cover the earth like waters the sea. This is the reason why we need greater works. To this end, that the knowledge of the glory of the Lord would cover the earth as waters the sea. Isaiah 40 and verse 5. Isaiah 40 and verse 5. It says, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. If that will happen through your life, shout a loud amen. amen. And the glory of the Lord, keep it there please media. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. It says, and all flesh shall see it together. All flesh, European flesh, American flesh, Asian people, all flesh shall see it. That means that revelation will not be hidden. No, it will not be boxed and hidden. There are things that God is going to be doing through the church before he returns. That it does not matter who loves God or who does not love God. It will be widespread news that this is what Jesus is doing testimonies and manifestations of his power in and through the saints and may you be part of that glorious army in the name of Jesus that as the wave of his spirit and power is sweeping across the nations that he will find a worthy vessel in you the glory of the Lord the love of the Lord the mercy of the Lord the power of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it